Potentiometers, also called POTs, are resistors whose resistance can be changed, generally by turning a knob or dial on the side of the device. These devices can be useful in creating a resistance which is not readily available, or in matching or complementing some other resistance in a circuit. This is the symbol we'll use for the potentiometer. It's the same as the resistor symbol, except that there's an arrow through the resistor to indicate that its value can change. This is a potentiometer from our analog parts kit. The maximum resistance is encoded on the side of the pot with three numbers. The first two numbers create a two-digit number. The third number is a power of 10 by which you multiply the first two numbers. This is 103, so the potentiometer value is 10 times 10 to the third, or 10 kiloohms. The actual resistance of the potentiometer can be adjusted by, to any value between 0 and this maximum resistance by turning the set screw on the side of the potentiometer. The potentiometer has three terminals with which to connect your circuits. The resistance between the two outer pins is simply the maximum resistance of the pot. The resistance between these pins doesn't change as you turn the set screw. The resistance between the center pin and either of the two outer pins does change as you turn the set screw. I've connected my DMM to the two leftmost pins on my potentiometer. If I now turn the knob on this set screw, I can change the resistance between those two pins. Right now it is about 5.8 kilo ohms. And I'm increasing it by turning the knob this way. Decreasing is in the opposite direction. Now let's look at one possible application for potentiometers. This circuit has both a positive and a negative voltage supply. So that the terminals of the resistors are at plus and minus 5 volts relative to ground. We want to balance the circuit so that the voltage difference V between this terminal and ground is 0 volts. The solution to the problem is simple. We just make the upper resistance 470 ohms. The two resistors form a voltage divider with 5 volts across each resistor, and the output voltage is 0. However, there are a number of practical problems associated with actually implementing this approach. For example, it's unlikely that we can find two resistors in our parts kit which have exactly the same resistance. Remember, there's always some difference between the actual and nominal resistance of our resistors. Also, the two voltage sources may not be exactly the same. This means that the two resistors will have to differ by a very specific amount, a very difficult task. We can make our lives easier by using a potentiometer to implement the top resistor. However, there's a slight problem with this as well. The potentiometers in our parts kit all have high resistances, which means that a fairly large resistance change results from even a small change in the set screw position. We can alleviate this problem by taking advantage of our newfound knowledge of parallel resistances. If we place a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer in parallel with, for example, a 1 kilo ohm fixed resistor, we're back just 288. But wait, we're back just 288. But wait, we're back just 288. But wait, we deliver anywhere in Northern California. Western of Wyatt's TV stereo, 1976, Western California, San Jose, or famous TV stereo, If you let Jim live, The equivalent resistance of the overall combination is simply the product of the two resistances, R sub P times 1 kilo ohm, over the sum of the two resistances, R sub P plus 1 kilo ohm. Now, if R sub P is very small, for example, 0, the equivalent resistance is 0. If R sub P goes to a very high value relative to 1 kilo ohm, the equivalent resistance goes to 1 kilo ohm. We've essentially created a potentiometer with a level change between 0 and 1 kilo ohm. This gives us much more sensitivity as far as resistance variation versus the set screw position. Here's the circuit we implemented. We have our 470 ohm resistor here. We've created a potentiometer between our 10 kilo ohm potentiometer and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. We've applied positive 5 volts relative to ground here and negative 5 volts relative to ground here. Our output voltage is measured between this terminal and ground. At the moment, we're getting about 0.17 volts. I can adjust that by turning the set screw on the resistor to change my variable resistance.
and it becomes extremely easy to balance my circuit. In this tutorial, we balanced a simple voltage divider using a potentiometer. Other resistive circuits performing similar functions are common in instrumentation applications. These circuits can be balanced using similar techniques to those presented here. Wheatstone bridge circuits, for example, use two voltage dividers in parallel and a single power supply to do what we did here with a single voltage divider and two power supplies. 